Charles VI inherited the throne when he was only 11 years old, but didn't gain full control of his kingdom from his greedy uncles until he was 21. They spent almost all of the kingdom's money, so Charles brought back his father's advisors, and this improved the country's economic situation greatly. After this, the people called him the Beloved. A couple of years later, he was heading to Brittany with his army and his brother Louis to go to war with a duke that refused to hand over an assassin. This assassin had almost killed one of Charles's advisors. It was said that Charles was very nervous and excited to get to Brittany, but the army's progress was very slow which made Charles very impatient. The king, Louis, and a group of his men were traveling through a forest when a leper ran up to the king and grabbed his bridle and yelled, Turn back! You are betrayed! The king's men got the leper away, but the man followed the group for half an hour yelling over and over, Turn back! You are betrayed! Shortly after leaving the forest, a page dropped the king's lance and it banged against a helmet. This caused Charles to shudder. He then drew his sword and yelled, Forward against the traitors! They wish to deliver me to the enemy. Then he started to thrash his sword all around him. By the time his men could get him off his horse and restrain him, he had killed four knights and almost his brother. The men laid Charles on the ground and he fell into a coma. The king would go between periods of sanity and periods of insanity for the rest of his life. In 1393, he couldn't remember who he was and didn't recognize his wife. In 1395 through 1396, he thought he was St. George and couldn't recognize his wife and children. At one point, he thought he was made of glass and had iron rods sewn into his clothes. Another time, he wouldn't stop running, and to keep him inside, some of the exits were walled up. It is said that Charles's madness was inherited from his mother's side. He died on October 21st, 1422 in Paris at the age of 53. Isabella was born in 1428 to Prince John of Portugal and his half-niece Isabel of Barcelos. In 1447, when she was 19, she married John II of Castile. John had a favorite named De Luna, and he controlled the king. He even tried to control Isabella. Naturally, she didn't like this and tried to convince her husband to get rid of him. She wasn't successful until after De Luna had a nobleman that had disagreed with him thrown out of a window. Isabella told the king that De Luna must be put on trial for murder. The king agreed and De Luna was executed. The king was saddened by the death of his favorite and died himself the next year. Isabella and her two children were sent to the castle of Aravello by her stepson. At the castle, Isabella became more paranoid and depressed. It is said that she first became paranoid and depressed after the birth of her first child. Year after year, her madness deepened. In 1461, her children, aged 10 and 8, were finally taken away from her. After this, Isabella thought she was being haunted by ghosts, especially the ghost of De Luna. She would wander the castle talking and cursing imaginary people for days on end. Isabella never saw her son Alfonso again, because seven years after he and his sister was taken away from their mother, he died under mysterious circumstances. But Isabella was finally visited by her daughter, also named Isabella, on her deathbed in 1496. Sadly, by this time, Isabella had no idea who she was or who her daughter was. 
Isabella passed away on August 15, 1496, aged 67. Granddaughter of Isabella of Portugal and older sister of Catherine of Aragon, Juana was born a year after the Spanish Inquisition was started. Both were created by Ferdinand II of Aragon and Isabella I of Castile. When Juana was 15, she had doubts about the Catholic faith and showed little interest in observing Catholic rites. So her mother decided Juana should be subjected to the rope. Juana was dangled from the ceiling with rope and weights were attached to her feet. She was left there until she became more enthusiastic about Catholicism. The next year, Juana was married to Philip the Handsome. Throughout their marriage, Juana gave birth to six children. All of them went on to become emperors and queens. Being the third child, Juana was never expected to inherit any titles, but after the deaths of her older siblings and their children, she became the heir apparent of both Castile and Aragon in 1500. In 1504, Isabella got a fever, and at this time, Juana didn't eat or sleep. After visiting her mother, she wished to travel to Flanders to be with her husband. But when people made it clear to her that it was impossible because she would have to travel through France and that Spain was at war with France, the 24-year-old Juana became enraged. When her mother died in 1504, she became Queen Regnant of Castile and her father was no longer king. But Isabella wrote in her will, if Juana was absent or unwilling to rule, her father would govern in Juana's stead until her heir reached the age of 20. Not happy with this, Ferdinand minted coins saying that he and Juana were co-monarchs. Philip, unhappy with the new coins, minted his own coins. The disagreement between the two men continued until 1506 when all three met and Ferdinand agreed to leave Castile to his most beloved children. But later, Ferdinand met secretly with Philip and signed a treaty stating that Juana's infirmities and sufferings made it impossible for her to rule. It clearly stated that she should be deprived of crown and freedom. Ferdinand later that afternoon refused to accept the treaty, but failed to come up with another one. This left Philip to rule in Juana's stead, but if Ferdinand felt his daughter's rights had been trampled on, he could intervene. A couple of months later, in September, Philip passed away from typhoid fever, but at the time, many whispered he was poisoned by Ferdinand. Juana refused to be parted from the corpse of Philip and kept him for a time. It is said she would hug and kiss him. In December of 1506, Juana tried to exert her right to rule, but the kingdom was in chaos because of plague and famine. Ferdinand didn't lift a finger to help his daughter until July of 1507. His return happened the same time when the plague and famine ended, leaving an impression with the people that Ferdinand had restored the health of the kingdom by simply returning. Father and daughter met the same month where Ferdinand pressured his daughter to give up her rule. Juana refused, but nonetheless documents were drawn up, making her father regent. The documents didn't have Juana's signature, but that of her father's. They even started with I the King. Ferdinand dismissed his daughter's faithful servants and had her confined to a convent. Ferdinand died in 1516, and yet again, Juana wasn't to rule in her own right, but to co-rule with her son, Charles I, later Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor. In October of 1517, 17-year-old Charles and his 18-year-old sister, Eleanor, visited their mother at the convent. Charles made it clear that he wanted his mother to stay at the convent. 
Juana didn't want to but didn't protest. In 1520, Juana was asked if she would support a rebellion against her son. She refused because it meant her son would lose Castile. After the failed rebellion, Charles made it clear that his mother was to be confined to a couple of rooms in the convent, and this caused Juana's mental health to degrade further. She came to believe that the nuns were trying to kill her, but there was no evidence of this. It also became hard for her to eat, sleep, bathe, and change her clothes. The last thing Charles instructed the convent to do was to make sure no one spoke to his mother. He said no good would come of it. And on April 12, 1555, on Good Friday, Juana died at the age of 75. Were these three royals truly insane or just stressed and are mistreated? You decide. Tell me in the comments below.